God bless you and welcome to this Tuesday night edition of the New Birth Church of God in Christ and our Bible study that we are so godly proud and glad for the privilege of being able to bring to you again. I'm Pastor Peyton and with me is... I'm Sister Gloria Peyton and I am so happy to be with you on tonight in the Bible study. Glad most of all, to be saved and sanctified, filled with his precious, filled with God's precious Holy Ghost. And I thank God for all of his blessings to me. He has been super good in spite of, and I thank God for all that he has done. Thank you. Glad to, glad to be with you again. Thank you for joining us on this platform. And truly, we thank God for each of you that make it possible, your support, your presence, your prayers, your liking us, and all the other things that we do for the analytics, as they call it, uh, to make it effective. And certainly want to appreciate the technicians, uh, Brother Chris Payton and those that help with making the technology uh, presentable, making it easy to receive and keeping it as something that we can use as a resource as we continue to walk in this way. So I thank God for the Bible study of the New Birth Church of God in Christ, and certainly for each of you that join us. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers and your offerings. Thank you for every word of encouragement. Thank you for your prayers, your love. And we ask that you will continue as we ask God to come in and bless. Let that which we do will have a be a blessing to someone and cause them to want to know what must I do to be saved? That's the question. That's the understanding. That should be the objective. Once we hear the word of God, our next thought ought to be, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Would that you would be mindful of the announcements of new birth. One special one we'd like to me uh, to lift up uh, as we enter in the the year 2022 begin 2023. Uh, I think we can see that uh, we all want to come together again in person. You always welcome on Sundays at this point in our, uh, our life of our church at 10 o'clock of our morning worship. And it is in person. You're welcome to come. All of the saints we just requiring for your safety, your safety, that you wear a mask. But you also want to begin our weekly studies. Uh, so Tuesday night, this Tuesday night, Tuesday, I'm sorry, Friday night, Friday night of this week, we are looking and asking and inviting you to be part of our Friday night a highlight service, but it'll be in, in person. The women will be talking about prayer. It is so important and necessary. We looked up the topics over the last month or so in our weekly study and we're looking at prayer as being a topic on this friday night and you are invited in person 7 30 uh 7 30 please make plans to come invite someone else and let's fellowship together and enjoy and receive what the lord will have us to have all right i believe that's it praying for those that are in need whatever that need may be don't have to be just sick. It's not just those that are bereaved, those that are lost, our young people that are troubled, homes that are in turmoil. Whatever the need is, we know that God is able. And as we were talking about prayer over the last series and continuing on tonight, please recognize and know that prayer is the answer. It is the answer. It is the answer, the only answer. Yes. We are learning as we are learning it's so important to know how to pray, know what to pray for, know what pleases God. So our chapter yeah. tonight is making prayer a priority, mm -hmm. making prayer a priority. Making is that action verb that indicates some kind of uh, uh, choice, some kind of determination and effort that's made by the individual. It's not coming by natu naturally so. It has to have knowledge involved, you gotta know that prayer is important, what it does, what to expect, but you have to use it. You have to make it something that's, uh, 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 you know a word, put your confidence in, 
uh, priority in the case of condition of being more important than other things. If mm -hmm. prayer, which is getting to God, is a priority, then you're well on your way to receiving and getting a change that you're looking for. So the scriptures tonight begin with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, uh, that most familiar scripture that Solomon gave it to us. Then 1 Timothy 2 and 4. 1 Timothy 2 and 4. And lastly, in the words of Christ, John 17 and 3. The gospel according to St. John 17 and 3. So as you get your papers and so forth, pencils, take notes as we begin again to talk about a prayer as a priority. Again, priority is just a condition of being more important than other things. Whatever it is, I don't care what mix that item may be, can be something totally insignificant to everybody else. But if it's more important to you, your decision, your mindset, your heart's desire, your existence, then that becomes a priority. Others may not need it. Others may not realize it. It may not be of any interest to anyone else, but to you, where you are, that particular item is necessary. So that makes the importance of prayer simple. That makes it easy because prayer in this situation is just a request for something that is vital, that's critical, that's urgent, that's serious in the life that we are living. My right here, my right now. What is it that's important, vital to me? What is it that I have said to be more important than anything else? It reflects the understanding of a need and an importance of something that we have and an understanding of the source or the answer to that particular item. Again, it reflects the understanding of the need. When I have a priority, when I set a priority, when I come to that determination that this is a priority in my life, it's because something that I need and I understand the source of an answer. We look and recognize that Luke 18 and 1, where Jesus uses the parable of the unjust judge and the widow to emphasize the importance of prayer. And it's the paraphrasing that men ought to always pray and not think. And it's for a good cause because of the things that happen in our life, because of the uncertainty, because of our lack of control, because of the attack of the enemy, we cannot give in to the doubts, the fears, the, um, the discouragement, or make any kind of excuse when our prayers are not immediately answered. You're gonna have something to challenge you. You're gonna have something that's gonna become that need in your life, some situation that you need to have changed. But you got to remember that the promises of God, that he will hear our prayer, is a blood-bought right, oh, bought yes. by the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's for the saints, and we must never lose heart. Yes. Song talks about the love, the blood has not lost its power. I don't care yes. how bad it gets or how situation may come, the blood still works. And because yes. of that blood, I have access to the throne of God through faith. Of course, we know the Bible to be filled with constant references of prayer. It talks about calling on the name of the Lord, the groanings, the sighing, the wailings, the crying, the entreating of God, all indication various situations where the dire needs of the individual are such that they cried out or called on the need of help and that was expressed in their emotion and their appeal to the Lord. But an analysis of the Bible, a reference I looked at was amazing to me because there are only 221 actually worded prayers that's recorded in the 66 books of the Bible, 221. There are 72 in Psalms, that has the most. There are 31 in the total gospel, Matthew, Mark, yeah. and John. So out of that 221, over 100 of them are found in, in essence, two groups. And interestingly, when we think about the Bible, there are 36 books, over half of the Bible, where there are no recorded prayers. And 15 of those are in the Old Testament. And my brothers and sisters, I found this interesting. 21 
of the books that have no recorded prayer are in the New Testament after the coming of Christ, after the giving of the Holy Ghost. So it's not saying prayers are not important. Again, it has references constantly throughout about the calling on the name of the Lord, the result of what prayer has done, how God answered prayers, but the actually worded prayer, that which we're talking about as being a priority seems to be more limited than what you may have expected. I think it's because we have the promises of God and those promises cover every aspect of our life, everything about us, our, our godliness and our living and that we can ask for. Read again, Matthew 7 and 7, which informs us that we should ask, that we can seek and that we can knock. It gives us a privilege to come before God and to ask implies the want. Seeking implies a loss and knocking implies a need. We must act in confidence and humility. We can seek with care and application and we can knock with earnestness and perseverance. So as we read the word of God, study his will concerning us, the words that he's left to be that guide to us, we find that there are more times and references that are made for the instructions to pray. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, our first scripture on tonight. I know it's very familiar to everyone, but I constantly need to keep that in my mind. And I believe it's important that you do the same. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us to. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Ah, Solomon, the wise one, made it clear and said that in all thy ways. So we're not just talking about a limited number of areas or activities. We're not just talking about certain dire needs or this class of catastrophe or this classification of need. Uh, it don't have to be. In all your ways, whatever it is we as saints of God want, do, say, think, direction we go, we're told that we need to acknowledge God, pray that acknowledgement, have him included before we make the decision. Don't just pray and ask God to do something. It's important to you. Uh, pray and make a decision to do something that's important to you and then turn around and ask God to fix it, to make it work, to give you the money so you can pay for it, to touch that person's mind so they'll agree. No, our ways are to ask God, the promise or the thing to do is to ask God before we get there and see if he lets us know that this is his will concerning us. Then Christ picked up the concept in Luke 18 and talks to Paul, I'm sorry, gives a parable about the widow woman who gives us example of it, we should always pray and not faint. Again, the hardships that come difficulties that we face. Knowing the promises of God, they may not always come immediately, but I can know that God will answer. He will allow it to be. Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, uh, the first verse says, and give supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Not just praying for that whatever. Let's pray that God's will be done that we can ask God to bless his people, that his glory will be revealed. The fourth verse of 1 Timothy 2 helps to make it clear as the end objective of those prayers. I'm prioritizing my prayer for my fellow men for this reason. 1 Timothy 2 and 4 says, Who will have all men to be saved? and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Ah, thank God for the opportunity, the accessibility, even the faith to believe that God can do anything. But anything. his desire for us, when he gives us access to him, being able to ask what we will, touching and agreeing, it ought to be that his will to be done, and his will is that all men are saved, that none are lost. So as you go through the word of God, looking at the subject and the content of those recorded prayers, it shows that our situations and our circumstances are very key to the 
factor behind our prayer, the motive why we call on the name of the Lord. I know many of the afflictions of the righteous, and I know that the ways of the transgressors are hard. But believers are those who have prayer as a priority, and they are the ones who care about God, who care about themselves, the lost, and doing the will of God. They are concerned about God being pleased, more so than anything else. And when that becomes our mindset, when that becomes what we do, our own feelings, our own desires, what we want, our own will, we can humble ourselves and allow God's will to be done, but we have to pray and have to ask God for the strength and the power for it to be maintained consistently in our life. For prayer to be that priority, we have to understand the importance it has in meeting our needs. How important is prayer in meeting our needs? I'm talking about a God that knows all things, who's omniscient and knows our thoughts, who has searched our hearts. He knows the thoughts of our imagination. He understands all of that. He also knows my needs before I've even asked for them. And I cast my cares on him and all the other concepts of the word of God that allows me to have this relationship with a supreme being. Our needs to have prayer are important because it is a, uh, a sign of the priority or the faith that I have in who God is. Jesus yes. was a perfect example of a yes. prayer warrior who had yes. to fight in prayer. With all that he had going on, all the things he had to do during his earthly ministry, we see that he never lost sight of his father's will. John 17 shows his focus on what, he, what was important to him. And as he prayed, talking to his disciples, he said, the hour has come. And what I need now is for you to glorify your son that he may glorify thee. All the things that's going on, let me be glorified so I in turn can give the glory unto you. He right. said that thou has given me power and you've given me a power over all flesh that he should, that he, Christ, should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. It's available to everyone. It's available to every man, woman, boy, and girl. And that's the end objective of all that we have, all that our relationship with God is, all the things that take place. I don't care what other things we have in the course of our life, in the days of our life, in the story of our life, how many children, how many, how much of a career, how long you live, how many days. The most important thing is verse three of the 17th chapter of John. And it says, and this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. That you may know the true, the only true God. We pray for all kind of stuff. We pray loud, we pray long, we pray often. Prayer is already a priority. If you set it as being something that you're going to do, that's fine, because we're going to pray. We're going to call on the name of the Lord in vain, out of vain, in season, out of season. But do are we praying that we may know God? Are we praying that we may have an understanding of who he is? Because our knowing God don't just give you access to all the power in the universe. It is the same as eternal life. So what profit does it give you? Bible indicates which a man profit if he gains the whole world and lose his soul. I can pray for all the stuff in life. I can pray and God can answer every prayer. Paul talks about having faith that you can move mountains and all the other things. And we give your body to be burned, but if we don't have eternal life, it's not gonna do us any good. And no one should want to miss out on eternal life. All the scriptures that we read center on the idea of knowing God and conforming to his will, his eternal will. Ignorance of him, refusing to know, refusing to believe in him is condemned. There's no excuse. There's no way around it. I can't say I didn't know. 
Ignorance is not an excuse. No wonder David declared, one thing I have desired of the Lord, not just being king, not just having children, all the things that the favor of God granted unto him. And he said that one thing, and that will I seek after, that he could know God, that he could dwell in his house, that he could be with him forever. This is the important thing that we look at, and that ought to be the reason that we prioritize our prayer. The one thing that a person desires, I'm sorry, is the thing that becomes the priority in his life. And he will normally do whatever is necessary to gain it. Mother, can you expand a little bit as I give, uh, uh, I'm sorry, opportunity to you, read the part of our discussion? Uh, Yes, sir. As you were talking, if I may. Go ahead. If I may, just for a moment, as you were talking about our recorded prayers and what we should be praying, you know, how we pray and the things that are officially recorded or whatever, I began to think about how we constantly, the scripture tells us that we should pray always and our definitions of prayer are varied. I began to think about prayer being just a constant, consistent conversation with God. And that in, in, in empowers us to pray daily and unceasingly when we constantly and through our day, go through our day, just talking to God, making him that priority in our lives. You know, Lord, help me to deal with this child of mine. Lord, take me through. God, I thank you for this food that we have on our table. I believe that conversation ushers in and enlarges our relationship with God. And that makes it priority in our lives and even bonds us even closer to him. So, of course, we should not cease to pray. Whether we're on our knees, whether we're in a formal situation like next Friday when we come together and pray, or whether we're just in the house by ourselves, like on today, had opportunity to just talk to the Lord, just ask him some questions and then listen for his response. And he did respond. Those kinds of things build that closeness and that togetherness to the point where he becomes the priority in your life, where when anything happens, we go to him first because that's what we know to do. We've practiced that in our everyday living. So, of course, we don't look around for other solutions. We know for a fact that he has the solution that we need. So we run to him, as the scripture says. We go to our rock. We go to who knows us best and and who we know through conversation, through Once we talk to God and get to know him and invite him into even the smallest items in our lives, the smallest issues, we become acquainted with him. And I believe he enjoys that fellowship. That's what it is. It's a fellowship with God. And I believe he accepts those prayers then as well as we go through our day. And we just tell him, God, I thank you for this. I thank you for this car. Lord, help me to go do my business and arrive back safely. That's a prayer. Lord, I thank you. That's why when we get on our knees, we begin to thank God and then recognize who he is. Because there is a fellowship. There is a relationship. In our lesson today, it says... Acts 1 and 14 tells how after Jesus had left the disciples and gone back to his father, the believers joined together constantly in prayer as they prepared 
or a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. They believed something was going to happen. When they were threatened by the powers of the time, the believers came together and prayed and God interceded for them. When James was killed and Peter was put in prison, put in jail, the saints prayed without ceasing and God sent an angel and released him out of that prison. Mm -hmm. Every time they had a crisis in the church, they remembered that prayer was the way to get a solution. Mm -hmm. So they united and they prayed. The early saints in the church of God in Christ joined constantly in prayer mm -hmm. as we did when our new presiding bishop took over. We mm -hmm. went immediately into days of prayer. We used to have all night prayer meetings. They called them shut-ins. And we saw a great move of God across our churches, our country, and our nation. And the church grew in vast numbers. Now we have prayer conference calls. We have prayer vigils. vigils. We have prayer lines across the nation, noonday prayers as well as Tuesday and Friday prayers. We can have prayer over the internet. We can turn on our YouTube and hear somebody praying miles and miles away. The women, men, and the youth are praying and we're crying out to our God for help during these turbulent times. We know that since we have made prayer a priority in our everyday life, in our recorded prayers and in the prayer, our intercessory prayers and in all types of prayer that God will hear and he will answer our prayers. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, before somebody get it twisted, you got to live right. Please don't get this mixed up. I just can't call on the Lord and because he said he would hear He's going to hear because my life is pleasing in his sight. Yes. It works. Prayer still works. works. Prayer is because God is still everything that he says he is. Yes. And because he is God, 1 John 3 and 22 lets us know we will receive what we ask because we keep his commandments yes. and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. As Thank we you. close on tonight, please. When prayer is a priority in your life, it will be first in your life. When we make God first, wow, wonderful, great things take place. Anything closing, Mother? Yes. What an opportunity we have to have the great big old God on our side. Amen. Answers our prayers, loves yes. and cares for his children and yes. is concerned about every issue we have. God bless you all. Word of prayer as we close. Before that, again, a reminder, Friday night, this Friday night, December the 9th, 7.30, let's come together at New Birth that we may enjoy the fellowship together as we continue to deal with prayer and its importance in our daily walk. These mm -hmm. last and evil days, we're going to need God. And prayer is the way to get to him. God, our Father, thank you again. It's time of sharing your people, each heart, each one, each home represented. Thank you for the peace that your word provides. Thank you for the instruction, the clarity, most of all the opportunity. And thank God for your son, Jesus, who by faith in him gives us access to every promise you have made and the power that we can fulfill and do those things that are pleasing. So bless your people, I pray. Allow our lives to be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen yes. and amen. We love you. We are praying for you. Yes.